In this video, we're gonna dive into the Massive Results Workshop where we help you get results quick. I'm gonna give you the number one question to ask yourself if you really wanna stay more consistent and a big tool that I've used to create massive growth in my life and business. Welcome, it's Peter Vug, and I'm excited to be here. Thank you guys for tuning in to the monthly uh, YEL 2.0 podcast, actually weekly, not monthly, video series. Whether you're watching on YouTube, whether you're uh, listening in your car, you're listening to the audio, I appreciate you. Today we're going to dive into something that is very, very powerful, useful, and needed if you want success and results in this new economy. It's called the Massive Results Workshop, and... I've had a big issue with focus. Even the last couple of years, they say that the average millennial can focus, I think, seven seconds total or nine seconds total without distraction. And I think a fish is like seven seconds. So a goldfish. So we aren't focusing much more than a goldfish as human beings. So this is one of the reasons I created a shorter podcast because people were having trouble focusing and listening to an hour or two podcast. Plus, I know you value your time and I value your time, so I'll keep it short, but you cannot get big things done if you don't understand the power of focusing on one thing until completed. And what I've realized is successful people don't stop when when they're unfocused or when they feel like stopping, they stop when they're finished. Um, When I first got into sales, I'll never forget, I was finally uh, running my own, I don't wanna say business, but I was my own boss, I controlled my own schedule, I had no one really tell me when to show up and what to do, and I remember having momentum for the first time. I had uh, sold a good amount, and I had momentum, I had confidence, I was excited, but I was like, oh my gosh, I could do what I want, and it was my first summer really owning my own business or being in control of my own business and I remember taking off like five or six days heading back home hanging with friends when I came back it was extremely hard to pick back up the momentum because in life the two scariest things are momentum and lack of it and I didn't have momentum and it took me a couple weeks to pick back up that's when I realized you have to stay consistent and make sure momentum's on your side I'm going to give you some essential questions to ask yourself but it's a whole different ball game when you're running a team. Fast forward a year and a half, I was running my own sales team. And I had a mentor at the time, an amazing mentor, and I remember having momentum once again in my business. Sales team was doing well. Um, I, I had receptionists, a couple assistants. Everyone was doing well. Once again, I, I got high on my horse, and I'm like, oh, I could take some time off. I took a week off because I'm like, I'm my own boss. I can do what I want. And while I was gone, literally um, half my sales team quit, the business crumbled, and it was a lot harder to pick back up momentum to hire more people and to get back to the level I was when I left because it wasn't just about me, it was about my team. And I realized two things in that moment. One, it's one thing to motivate yourself. That's not that difficult. And if you need motivation, then you might not be doing, you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. And if you need someone else to tell you what to do, you're not going to make much money. So I first realized motivating myself wasn't that difficult, but motivating someone else was a whole different ball game, right? Second thing was my mentor taught me in the moment. He said, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can leave, you can travel the world, you can like stay home, you can come in the office, you can run your business. It doesn't matter. But your job as a CEO is to produce results in your business whether you feel like it or not. So he goes, you can leave town, but just make sure everything's delegated and make sure everything is running and make sure the results are created. I'll never forget that conversation because I realized that it didn't matter if I was there or not. As long as results were created, that's when I started becoming obsessed with developing people, putting systems in place. So your job as a human being, whether you're a dad, a mom, um, whether you do work for somebody, whether you have your own business, whether you're creating, whether you're on the side uh, being a freelancer, your job is to produce results consistently, whether you're there or not, whether you feel like it or not, whether you're sick or not. Human beings' biggest motivation is progress. So this workshop came about um, years ago 
Anytime I'm stressed or I don't feel like I'm getting the results, I go back to this workshop. Super simple, but I'm gonna go through it and you guys have to take the time on your own time to answer these questions. First thing, these are just simple questions um, that you have to be always at the forefront of your mind with clarity. One is, what's your big five? What are the five things that you wanna accomplish in the next 30 to 60 days that if you accomplish these, you'd be excited, you'd be fulfilled, you'd be proud, you'd be confident, you'd be happy. What are the five things that have to happen from today's date? Let's just do 30 days, right? Maybe it's finishing your book. Maybe it's making 500 sales calls. Maybe it's hiring a copywriter. Maybe it's hiring a CFO. Remember, nothing works unless you do. And if you don't work, you need to work through your team, right? The people who really do the work and do the due diligence and and move with clarity are the ones that get the results and build the businesses. They attract the most clients, the most uh, influence to their organization, right? So what are your big five? Forget everything else and just focus on what are the five things that you want to accomplish? Business, non-business in the next 30 to 60 days, okay? Second question. What are your top five values? In other words, what things do you value the most? Are you on purpose? Are you off yourself? And are you moving with intention? Are you moving with purpose and clarity? You don't wanna live a life based on someone else's value. So when I when I write down my top five, I also say, okay, what are the, what's most important to me? Now, it depends on what stage you're at in your business, okay? If you're at the beginning stages and you're, you need funding, you don't have money, one of your values should be income and you might have to sacrifice other areas of your life for income but you need to know what stage you're at you need to know uh, what values are most important to you so it could be family it can be peace of mind and flexibility it can be income it can be marketing it can be adventure um, peace of mind progress results i don't know but you need to figure out what's most important to you in order So here's how you do it. Write out your top 10 values and then slowly cross out. If you had to take a value out, what would that be? And then slowly do that until you have your top five and then organize those most important to least important. Now, you need to make sure everything you're doing is connected to what's most important to you, right? And then anything that comes across your desk, all the emails, the requests, the messages, Any inquiry that comes across your desk, you need to ask yourself, whatever your values are, you match it against each value. So here's an example. When I was coming up in the business world, obviously I wanted money. I've been broke, I've been stressed out, I've been frustrated, and I never wanna live that way ever again without choices. I remember being at restaurants when I was new, and if I was with somebody and I was treating them, I, I, I would cringe if they got an appetizer. Right, And I said, I never want to live that way ever again. I want to be where there's no worries about money or finances. And I think everyone should experience that. But that's why one of my values was money. So anything that came across my desk, I'd say, is this going to contribute to my income and my vision? Or is it going to contaminate? And I learned to say no to things that weren't connected. This is a great way to to live more purposeful, right? Now, one of my biggest values is uh, peace of mind and flexibility. You couldn't pay me a five million dollars to be on someone else's terms and someone else's schedule and under someone else's control that might not be you but that's me so now when someone comes across my desk we have a lot of partnerships and and people reaching out for different things whether it's speaking whether it's um to run an event whether it's a podcast and here's what i ask myself is this going to contribute to my freedom or contaminate my freedom if it contaminates i say no if it contributes i say yes Right, so top five values. Next down, what are your top three, actually top five, sorry. What are your top five productivity practices that you know when you're executing these, you're at the peak of your productivity? Maybe it's not moving on till you have absolute clarity. Maybe it's early morning routine. Maybe it's exercising five, six days a week. Maybe it's uh, doing your weekly master plan where you're planning every single week, your nightly review, Um, Maybe it's the 60, 20, 60 I've taught you guys. For the first 60 minutes, you're all in on your toughest task with no distractions. You take a 20 minute break, back to the 60 minutes. I don't know what keeps you productive, but think about your top five 
productivity practices and think about when you're at your best, what are you doing? What are you thinking? How are you starting your day? All right, that's a big, big key. So top five productivity practices. Here's a big one. It depends on where you're at, but I, I'd assume if you're not where you want to be and you're watching this because you want more, you're not fully satisfied. The people that, that connect with me are the ones that want to get to that next level. So what five new beliefs need to be installed into your psychology? Your behaviors are a reflection of your beliefs. Maybe it's the more you give, the more you get. The more you grow, the more you can give. Um, you can be a top-notch speaker. You will make money as a reflection of value. Just because you're past, you haven't had money, doesn't mean you're not um, adapt to actually making 50, 100K a month, right? I can attract amazing partners in my business. I can hire A players. So think about your, your limitations. Think about where your limitations come from and what new beliefs need to be installed. Um, I'm going to share an example of this for me. So when I first got into direct sales and I first was running a business, <clears throat> I had a way, way like jaded, bad belief system as far as running a business because I had never really ran a business. So my old convictions when I was running a business in direct sales, this is when I had to hire a train and I had my own territory up in Seattle, uh, Seattle, Washington. This is, let me tell you the difference here. My old beliefs and convictions were this. I'm not a good trainer and I'm too young to lead a team. I was 22, three years old and I was hiring people twice my age. So I kept telling myself I was too young to lead a team. My next limitation was I don't have enough experience. Um, when I'm stressed out, I should take time off. That was a belief of mine. So a belief was when I'm frustrated and stressed, I should take time off. Um, not a good belief, by the way. I don't have a good territory or area and it's holding me back. I was in a rougher area. Now, I later used that to my advantage, but I thought that was holding me back. And whatever you play in your head over and over again becomes your reality. Great people aren't going to work for me. I could never attract A players. Now, when this was my mindset, I went broke and I was the bottom 5% of my company. I, I was working 80 hours a week and I was losing money at age 22. Now, let me tell you what these turned into from a lot of uh, like brain exercises, reading. I read a lot of books from, from back there. I uh, got around the right people. I leveled up my circle of influence. And my new convictions, my new beliefs, I can get anybody to succeed and age is irrelevant. Then I backed those up with facts about stories of people that were actually young crushing it, right? I backed it up with facts. When I focus on something, it will magnify it and multiply. So what that means is whatever you focus on multiplies. If I was focusing on I don't have enough experience, I'll tell myself I don't have experience and I won't actually be resourceful to figure out how to surpass that, right? But I was focusing on experience is irrelevant, right? It's figuring out what moves the needle and what get results and cutting my learning curve in half by getting around people that are already successful in my field. Another belief, stress is just a lack of results and I need to step up my thinking and action. So when I was stressed, I used to take time off and it got even worse because no results were created. Then I flipped it and said, okay, when I'm stressed, I should work more, but more strategically and intelligently. Um, personal recruits is the most effective form of marketing. If I can master marketing, I'll be ahead of most people. Personal recruits are... Uh, friends referring friends and we were one of the top in the company once we actually understood that personal recruits were effective so whatever marketing is effective in your industry it'd be like focusing on that 10 times i am always in control of my results and recruiting at all times so this are my new these were my new beliefs uh different than my past beliefs so my past beliefs i was top five percent or bottom five percent of my company i was losing money at 22 my new convictions, I was working 30, 40 hours a week at 300K income at 24. So this is what happened. So what convictions or beliefs are holding you back and what new beliefs need to be installed based on where you're at? <clears throat> Next question. What's your one game-changing move? What's the one game-changing move? Maybe you've been holding off. Maybe you've been nervous to do. Maybe you don't think you... 
you can accomplish it, but now your beliefs are reinstalled. Now you know you should do that. Maybe it's reaching out to influential people. Maybe it's giving messages to salespeople. Maybe um, it's getting your book out. I don't know. What would be your one game-changing move that can help accomplish the other five goals? Only you know what this is, right? Six, what are your top, and these, these, this is something you can do in 10, 15 minutes. Go through these questions, right? So what are your top three, not five, three life lessons that you've been taught the past 12 months? What are your biggest perspective shifts, breakthroughs, and lessons that life has taught you in the last 12 months? I don't know what they are, right? But you need to figure out your life. So some of mine were take my time with everything and stop rushing. If I think things through, I'll never have to redo, right? I need to stop comparing myself to everyone else. Don't compete. Stay in my own world and compete with myself. Never go by time, only results. Stay around genuine, caring, and authentic people that have similar values that we do as a family and never force it. Only align with people that align with me, right? So it, it's for you thinking about what lessons life has taught you. And then lastly, what are your top five non-negotiables? What are you going to do every week that's non-negotiable for you that has been proven to give you results? Maybe it's waking up early, working out five days a week, consistent value to the marketplace, putting out a podcast, connecting with high-level people. Um, maybe it's, it's to never let someone else tell you what you're worth. Maybe it's not to tolerate being disrespected or being uh, put down. Never, it's never having a job, always working for yourself. I don't know what your non-negotiables are, but figure out your non-negotiables. And the last thing I, I've, I've worked on that <clears throat> changed the game for me is figuring out what happens when I feel the most successful. So th this is going to narrow your focus for faster growth, right? It'll bring to the surface the things that you should be spending time on and attention on and will help you understand how to be fulfilled. So... Here's the question. I know I'm successful when. Okay, let me review the top. What are your big five? What are your top five values? What are your five productivity practices? What are five beliefs that need to be installed? What's your one game-changing move and your three biggest life lessons? And then your five non-negotiables. Once you get all those down, then you say, I know I am successful when. When I'm speaking on stage. I know I'm successful for me. I know I'm successful when I'm being uh, I'm on my own terms and I'm doing what I want and I'm wearing what I want to wear. I went to Success Live, one of the biggest events on the planet with Les Brown and Brandon Burchard and Mel Robbins and Scooter Braun, all these big speakers. And I was the only speaker that wore a t-shirt and a hat, right? I was at my best because I didn't let them persuade me to wear a suit. One of the reasons they hired me is because I was a millennial and I could wear what I want, right? I know I'm successful when I'm impacting others, when I'm wearing what I want to wear, when I'm not focused or worried about money, when I'm in the studio creating content, when I'm staying world-class in my values, when I'm mentoring and inspiring others, when I'm traveling and loving life, when I'm full of peace of mind. I don't know what it is for you, but you need to define when you're successful, what's happening. I know I'm feeling amazing and I'm feeling filled with ambition and confidence and success and courage when blank. Come up with 10 things. I'd love to hear from you guys too. What is it that you do or what are you executing or, or how are you living when you know you're successful? Let us know below. But I appreciate you guys. Hope this helps. Take this seriously because so many people make up for their lack of results and their lack of action and their lack of actually creating something by sharing the vision, by talking louder, by making up for it from everything except getting real results. And honestly, guys, results is the name of the game. And all successful achievers understand that. So share with me below um, any breakthroughs you had, any thoughts, share anything that you think would be valuable to others. I'll be in the comments answering. But I want you to really take this serious. I know I'm successful when. When are you the most successful in your life and business? Till next time, appreciate you guys. We'll talk soon.
Hey, what's up guys? If you like this video, I think you'll really enjoy these videos right here. And also, please make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below. We have a lot of amazing content coming out. See you guys soon.